Alicia from the blog and podcast now that we're family.com and we've gotten some questions as to what our family Christmas traditions are which makes sense because it's always fun to hear other people's different Christmas traditions. Ours are a little bit different in that this is the second year that I have celebrated Christmas in my life and that we have celebrated Christmas together as a family. So our, our traditions are very, very baby, but we will tell you guys what we are starting to do in our home. And we actually do a full podcast as to why we decided to celebrate Christmas. And you might be actually asking the question, why did you never celebrate Christmas? And we talk about that in that podcast. So we'll link that below so you guys can kind of hear how we got to celebrating Christmas in the first place. It has been so fun to celebrate this holiday as a family and to just have a really fresh start coming to it. It is fun to look at this season and be like, okay, what are we gonna do with our kids year after year after year? What do we want them to remember? How do we keep it from becoming chaotic and materialistic and fatiguing and stressful and expensive? <laughs> because I think those are some downsides to Christmas. We're able to set our kids up with the expectations that we want them to have going forward. So we've been intentional with that. Being a Christian family, everything we do revolves around the reality that we are blood bought by Jesus Christ and the incarnation of God. God becoming man, coming in the form of a man, Jesus Christ himself, is at the heart and center of our hope. And so, of course, we celebrate that year round, but this is a nice little season to really emphasize the virgin birth, the implications of the virgin birth, why there needed to be a virgin birth. There are so many profound doctrines that are really dependent on the birth of Jesus Christ, the, the core to the Christian faith. And so, yes, we believe it and we celebrate it year round, but we are definitely going to take advantage of this season to really hammer down and hammer home who Jesus Christ is, why he needed to come to earth in the form of a man, to be fully God and fully man, to live a sinless life, to bear our sins, to pay the penalty of our sins, and then conquer our sins by rising from the dead and giving us hope in eternity. But the Advent season is just like a no-brainer for us as to why not emphasize this aspect of who Jesus is. Last year, we started with this little book, and I'll see if I could find it and link it for you guys down below. It was a sweet little story, and each day you would read a page of the Christmas story and of Christ's birth, and it didn't stop at his birth that I really liked. It went on to tell about why he needed to be born, because I think a lot of the unsaved world is cool with Jesus being born. You know, Jesus is a baby that's really unintimidating, right? But he came to be uh, the savior of the world and to reign as God. And so I think that that part of the story, it, it went all the way through. But I was really convicted this year. We were talking about it, whether we were going to do it or not. And I just want to read straight from the Bible to our kids this year. Not only in Luke, when Jesus comes to earth as a baby, reading through that, but then also just choosing different passages of the gospel story and really following Jesus's life through to his death and resurrection. So that's something that we are focusing on during our morning reading in the Bible. There are some fun things that we definitely do. Of course, you know, there are all sorts of opinions about what the Christmas tree symbolizes or what it does not symbolize. We've come to a place where we feel very comfortable having a Christmas tree in our home. And so that's another thing that we do as a family. I can't say that we hike out into the woods here in North Idaho and find a prime, you know, Douglas fir or noble fir or any type of evergreen and, and cut it down and bring it back to our house. We actually just go about a half mile down the road to Home Depot and buy a tree from Home Depot. Yeah, but it's been fun just seeing how that's become. You know, it's only been two years, but it's a tradition. We, I like the live tree, and I think we'll keep it that way. I like how they smell. Elisha sold Christmas trees for years. And I think that there's something to, um, I like that it starts after Thanksgiving with a live tree because you can't keep it up in your house you know, for months on end. And I like that because I think that Thanksgiving is such a popular, I really want to emphasize Thanksgiving because of the patriotism and because of thankfulness and just a heart of gratitude before we kick into the Christmas season, which tends to be more like gimme, gimme, gimme. And so I like having that full setup in November. So that said, I think it's kind of nice because 
it gives us some, some boundaries. Yeah, and the kids already are looking forward to it, and oh, yeah. we really make this a family affair. We let them decorate the tree with us, not with us. You can see us. it's like really clumpy here. We just, they just decorate it. Yeah, I was gonna say, they don't decorate it with us. They We just let them decorate it, yeah. and it just ends up how it ends up. Um, and so that's something that's really fun. It Obviously, it, it creates a huge mess at first, but it's one of those things where Katie and I are, are in it far more for like the relational bonding that takes place and the family memories that we're creating through it. The last thing we want to be is uptight and stressed out, yeah, no. you know, with the kids <laughs> and be snapping at them as we're trying to get the Christmas tree set up because that's obviously what they're going to remember and they're going to associate it with this season. And the la that's the last thing we want for our kids and want them to remember from it. Yeah, it's really just about having a good time for us with yes. any of the traditions that we're doing. We just want to enjoy our children and have them enjoy the season. So yeah, we don't have anything special when it comes to ornaments or anything like that. They tend to all get broken by the end of the year. Last year, Elisha was like, don't we have ornaments from last year? And I was like, I think by the end of the year, every single one of them had the tops popped off and were used as balls around the house. We've already lost like four or five and it's been a few days. Kind of what we base all of our Christmas traditions around is the little advent house calendar that I got. I knew I wanted to do an advent calendar. I love the countdown and the anticipation and I knew the children would enjoy that. And there's so many different kinds of them, but we really didn't want this season to become materialistic. We wanted to focus on memories. And that's something that I think is true of what we want for our family. We don't necessarily want our kids to remember the things we bought them, but the the memories that we had as a family. So this facilitated that for us. We have the little box, the kids can't wait to run in and open it up in the morning. And instead of putting candy in there, we put an extra vitamin in the box because you can use extra vitamins in December. It's a treat for the kids. It's one of their more rare vitamins that they get. And it's fun because it gives them an extra little treat, but I'm not giving them candy every day of the month and that keeps them eating. So. Yeah, these are like chewable vitamin C's. Yeah, from, they're sweet. Yeah, they're not like zincs or like <laughs> carotenoids to straight Here's up liver vitamins. Pill. Yeah, exactly. No, they're they're tasty for sure, and it's something that the kids get to look forward to. And and again, in everything that we're doing, Elisha and I are thinking of our children's appetites, and we're forming their appetites. And if they think of this month as sugar month, that's not our goal for them because that's not going to serve them later in life. And so, yeah, so we opted to do that. And then we write on a little piece of paper the night before something we're gonna do that day as a family or that the kids are gonna do with me. Yeah, and that ranges from bigger things, like actually one of the bigger things we just got home from was we go to, uh, here in downtown Coeur d'Alene Resort, puts on this like little cruise where you can get on one of their little boats and then you can cruise across the lake. And I don't know how they rigged this up, but you're able to go from Coeur d'Alene to the North Pole within like 10 minutes. And so I don't know what type of crazy- Lucy told me, she said, see, I told you we're going to the North Pole. She like heard it over the loudspeaker. I was like, yeah, it's pretend, it's pretend. Yeah, and so that, this is our second year doing that. They put on a great show. It's really fun. The kids love it. We look forward to it. We get all bundled up. Um, and so that's something that we've really enjoyed and we've embraced. And the kids are already starting to talk about doing it again next year. And this is another thing too, especially since we live, you know, in a northern climate up here in North Idaho, we've really embraced just doing activities of the season. And Christmas is definitely, I think that's a big reason why we really embrace celebrating Christmas and, and using the advent calendar and getting a Christmas tree is because the fact is, is it is really dark up here. A lot of our motivation was just like very practical, like quality of life things. It gets dark at 3.30 and yeah. like we have very short hours, we're, we're very normal. Yes, exactly. And as I already mentioned, of course, it's a great season to really dwell on the birth of Jesus Christ like we would want to do year round. Um, but then in addition to that, there are some festivities that are unique to the season. And so we've really embraced those and it, it kind of uh, it shakes up the year for us. Obviously, we're around the lakes and the rivers all summer and all spring and all fall. And so uh, being able to do some more of these cold weather activities is really fun. Yeah, with the lights too. It just keeps the house so happy and homey. All you guys who have been celebrating Christmas for years know exactly what we're talking about, but it's been really fun for yes. us. That's a little bit more of a big yes. deal. Um, something that they talk about all year and that we've actually done for the last four years is building a gingerbread house. And that's something that even when we weren't celebrating Christmas, we would build a gingerbread house and they just love that. 
and the candy would slowly disappear until I just had to throw the house out. <laughs> like this is too big of a temptation. Um, so that's really fun. We're looking forward to that this year. I wrote down a list of things that I've collected from different bloggers, different people who have had traditions in their home for a lot longer than us to get ideas for our calendar. And our favorite ones that we did last year we'll be recreating this year. And I'll put those in a link down below for you guys so you could see exactly what those are. One of them that is unique to something we do is we make maple syrup candy with the snow. And so the kids are talking about that already and you just go out and you get snow and you boil maple syrup. And you have to be really careful not to burn the maple syrup because it's like 15 seconds between uh, tasty and oh man you messed up and have to start over <laughs> and um, you just pour it on a cookie sheet and it's like this old-fashioned taffy they did it in like Little House on the Prairie days and it's a really fun way to make our own candy while still feeling like pretty good about it you know it's maple syrup so that's something else that we enjoy yeah and then something that we've actually done our entire marriage and we probably will continue to do it for the foreseeable future is we go over to my hometown and we perform Christmas concerts with the rest of my family I'm one of ten children and we grew up performing many Christmas concerts and we would perform year-round but what we've the only thing we've kept going is our hometown Christmas concert and so it's a really special thing there's a lot of nostalgia it's a tradition that's been going on for maybe 14 or long maybe 15 16 years now and so it, it runs deep in my family um, and now our children are starting to be a part of the show and so they really look forward to it and this is kind of like at the crux of our December. We kind of plan our whole December around when we need to go over for practice sessions with my family and then when the actual concerts are. This year we're doing three concerts in my hometown. Um, and so that's something that Katie's been such a good sport on, even when she didn't have, feel comfortable celebrating Christmas. She was totally supportive of me doing these concerts with my family. She really embraced it. So I really appreciated that. And it's something that now we all enjoy and we all look forward to. And um, I think we'll be able to do that for years to come. Yeah, last year Leon got up with all his cousins with a little cardboard box fiddle that his aunt made him because he wanted to be in the show so bad and was bawling us out after the show being like, Daddy, Mama, why do I not have a fiddle? Like my younger cousins have fiddles. So he got a fiddle this year for the express purpose of learning it to play in the concert. And I'm sure it will keep him practicing all year next year as well to play in the concert so he doesn't lag behind his cousins. So that's been really fun because it's impacted the music in our home throughout the year as we look forward to uh, the Christmas concerts. And it is a beautiful way to spread the gospel in Elisha's hometown. And I've always been yeah, super supportive of that. And also just the legacy for me of seeing his parents up there and his siblings and now seven of you guys are married and then all the grandchildren, the 20 some odd grandchildren and more on the way all the time. It's just so cool to see a family up there worshiping the Lord together, playing together and taking all that extra effort to get your kids dressed up for three shows and you know, skip nap times and travel and do practice days and all that. It's just, it's a lot of effort, but the accumulation of it is just beautiful. My family doesn't do gifts at all, so that's easy. <laughs> with Elisha's family, they're really relaxed with gifts, so we just do a big secret Santa gift exchange. So I buy someone a gift and Elisha buys one person a gift. And we do a big, you know, sit around in a circle, everyone opens up their gifts. It's really fun, but people aren't buying for everybody. And especially with a family that big, that's really special. Again, with your home, it's more about the memory of we all sit around and open a gift together. Yes. Then who bought who what and how much did it cost and all that. So I'm really grateful they've kept that. And then the kids now do that with their cousins. So that's fun. We don't usually do that on Christmas Day, but we have a Christmas breakfast over at his family's after the shows are done. Yes. And do that. So that's cool. As far as family gifts, that's all that happens. And then here in our home, we just have the kids get stockings and then they get one present underneath the tree that is a family gift. So last year we got a bunch of magnet tiles. This year I've been waiting since June to buy our kids train tracks. <laughs> wow. I told you, I'm like, I'm gonna wait till Christmas, I'm gonna wait till Christmas, but I mean, they've got a lot of use out of the magnet tiles. Yes. So I'm excited to get them the train tracks. I think they'll have a lot of fun with those. Um, but again, it's not about the gifts, 
but I do think obviously gifts are fun. And so in the stockings, I try to put like, Lucy's gonna get a doll this year, the boys are gonna get Lego and pocket knives. You know, I, I try to put actual gifts in the stockings because I don't just want a bunch of junk cluttering up my house. Like, not cool. I wanna show you real quick a few of our Christmas books. I would love, um, over the next couple years to read like a book a day through the Advent season. I think that's really fun. But we just started getting our Christmas books. And um, in Orange for Frankie, this one's super cute. You think the story's going nowhere and then you cry at the end. So there's that. Um, the Legend of the Candy Cane. These have beautiful illustrations. Yes. They're written so well. Okay. Yeah, especially the illustrations in that one are so good. The candy cane. Oh, yeah. I really liked this one. Yeah. This one. He called me, he read it to the kids first. What did you think about it? Well, it's the, is it the same author? It's the as, same author as, as the, the Orange, Orange for Frankie. Yeah. And she's got a knack for like boring you to death until the end and then you're bawling. Like you're just crying your face out. And that's with the this one, the Christmas tapestry, I, I was like, where is this thing going? This is the most pointless story ever. And then the kids all looked up at me and I said, tears running down my face and they were worried about something. They're like, Daddy, what's wrong? I'm like, oh, it's just the sweetest Maybe thing ever. Maybe you're so emotionally spent by the time you read the book, you cry because it's yeah. done. I don't know. I love the language in those. Again, because we're trying to pursue like a Charlotte Mason kind of theme when it comes to bringing literature into our home, well-written books instead of cheesy ones that are twaddle are something that's very important to me. Twaddle are something that's very important to me. Twaddle are something that's very important to me. <laughs> Okay, and then the last one I have, so this is a, a part of a set. I read this book for the kids Thanksgiving. This is the Thanksgiving one. Our Christmas one hasn't gotten here yet, but it has a recipe on the back for cranberry bread. We made it for Thanksgiving, and that's gonna be a tradition for us for Thanksgiving. The kids like loved it. And I didn't love this book that much, but they asked me to read it every single day, and I think we read it three times on Thanksgiving. Wow. Yeah, so I they love Mr. Whiskers. It's, he's just a fun character, and so, I have gotten the um, Valentine's one and the Christmas one to read <laughs> during the holidays too. So those are all some really good books that we really enjoyed. One tradition we do not do, well, we don't do Santa Claus. I feel like people are gonna assume that we don't. And then the other thing we don't do is Christmas pajamas. I love the Christmas pajama idea. We got them. My kids don't sleep in pajamas, period. So I could not get them to put them on. They got them on for like a picture and then slept in their undies the rest of the winter. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe when they're older, we'll do something like that. I love the concept, but they just complain about being too hot. So that pretty much does it for our traditions thus far. And as we already said, we're two years into this whole Christmas thing. And so I'm sure there'll be many more traditions established in years to come. Something I do want though. Wow, okay. <laughs> yeah, so I... Sorry. I just want to say, our traditions, I really want to be simple and easy because if we're having a baby during the season or if it's harder for work or we're doing a move or like we maybe we go through a season where we just don't have a lot of money or like it just doesn't matter. I want it to be really easy for me and not this stress or this burden. You know yes. what I mean? To keep up the kids' expectations. So we try to keep things really low key and I don't want to add on too much so that I'm burdened by trying to put on this like Christmas extravaganza. Yes. Anyways, thank you for watching. And if you've got any great traditions that you just love and you want to share them with us, yeah, tell us because we're, 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 I feel like kind of like a clean slate here. Oh yeah. Like, oh yeah. yeah. We're looking for things that are just like, oh my goodness, that is so good. And we would have never heard them except through you. I feel like last year I watched so many YouTube videos just being like, what do people do for this season to make it special? And we have some things that I think are going to stick and we're really open to ideas and things that are fun for your guys' families. Thank you so much. See you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.